and equity study that we're doing with the state of Connecticut. Our goal for today is to introduce you to the study itself and preview opportunities for you and, and um, the community writ large to engage and provide us feedback throughout the duration of this study. Um, so next slide. CHRO, the Commission on Human Rights and Opportunities, is sponsoring this study um, and grounded in, in legislation that um, their office is, is implementing. Um, Executive Director Hughes is not able to join us this evening. Darcy, is there anything you would like to say um, on behalf of CHRO before we dive in? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to um, thank everybody for being here. Um, we're really excited to to work with um, Faulkner on this important study. Um, this is a really uh, good opportunity for the state to take a, a deep look at its at its programs and make sure that they are all operating in a way um, that are um, that's the most equitable possible for for all the state's residents, which um, of course is uh, a really important part of the mission for the Commission on. Um, human rights and opportunities, which is to eliminate discrimination in the state. So we're really looking forward to getting this study going. So thanks so much for being here, everybody. Thank you. So um, my colleague Wanda McLean and I are co-leading this study with Faulkner Consulting Group. Faulkner Consulting Group is a um, small niche um, policy firm in New England that specializes in work at the intersection of policy operations and analytics. Much of our work is in the healthcare space. We do a lot of work in the equity space as well. Um, I, my personal background that I, that I bring to this study includes um, leading health equity initiatives and programs, both nationally and New England, particularly for Medicaid members. Um, and we've also worked closely with DSS in Connecticut uh, on sort of primary care work and maternity bundled payment reform, all with the lens of improving uh, equity and reducing disparities for uh, Connecticut residents. Um, I'll turn it over to Wanda to introduce herself. Thanks, Angela. Good evening, everyone. I'm Wanda McLean, and I'm re really pleased to be with you this evening um, and to join Faulkner on this important study for the state of Connecticut. I um, also lead my own consulting practice, McLean Consulting Associates, which focuses on organizations and agencies um, who are looking to improve and advance uh, equity for uh, populations who have had persistent disparities. I'm also a former healthcare executive with experience in healthcare delivery, finance, uh, equity, community health, and community engagement. And again, really excited to be a part of this effort. Next slide. So just a little bit of context for, why, uh, for this equity study. Um, this, the state of Connecticut crafted the study to align with the federal efforts um, that came on day one of the Biden administration. Um, in January 2021, uh, the president signed an executive order to create a comprehensive approach to advancing equity uh, within um, executive branch agencies and departments and really um, to work to address any inequities um, that, that might be identified. The key outcomes of that work are to um, you know, uh, come up each of the agencies with um, action plans. Also, an equitable data working group was created. And then finally, there was a, a, there is an assessment of assessment practices, a review of the best practices in terms of assessing um, um, equity. The state of Connecticut, a few months later, passed legislation to undertake this equity study of its own executive branches, uh, policies, and, and programs. And as you heard, um, uh, CHRO um, is overseeing this in partnership with the Department of Administration 
and the Office for Policy and Management. And uh, this study will inform um, new uh, state policies, practices, and programs, um, again, with the goal of improving equity of opportunity and outcomes for all residents of Connecticut. Next slide. Uh, so the study goals, um, this is, you'll hear a little bit more about this in a moment, uh, but this is a multi-phase project that aims to look at um, the programs and policies and assess um, whether or not there are any disparities and then make recommendations to remedy them. So um, the first part of that work um, is to evaluate those um, programs and policies to understand whether there are any systemic um, barriers um, to accessing benefits or opportunities. One of the pieces of work that we're involved in currently is um, the landscape analysis, analysis looking at um, at uh, each state agency, um, a program, and looking at the outcomes um, of the, that program for Connecticut residents. We're also looking at demographics and um, other outcomes to see if there are any patterns of discrimination, inequality, or disparities um, in any of the um, uh, programs. And then finally, we'll make recommendations based um, to improve um, any disparities that are identified. So the outcomes will be um, that this will contribute to the state's goal of improving um, data practices across the state. Um, it will, will review trends and progress in addressing known areas of disparity. And we'll look at um, the root causes that drive disparities in terms of access and outcomes. And then finally, um, the uh, important work will be implementing a, an approach um, to make recommendations to address and remedy those disparities. Next slide. So um, we, there's a broad definition, a uh, comprehensive definition of underserved communities. I'll just read it quickly. Um, populations sharing a particular characteristic as well as geographic communities that have been systematically denied an opportunity to participate in aspects of economic, social, and civic life, such as Black, Latino, Indigenous and Native American persons, Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders, and other persons of color, members of religious minorities, gay, uh, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer persons, persons with disabilities, persons who live in rural areas, and persons otherwise adversely affected by persistent poverty or inequality. As I said, it's a comprehensive um, look at a number of different identities um, and how they how you know their outcomes within the state. Next slide. I'll turn it over to Angela. Thank you, Wanda. Um, so, as Wanda described, we're conducting this study over five phases. We started this work in December with some initial planning and. Um, uh, and designing the study in partnership with the CH CHRO team. We're moving into an iterative process of phase two, three, and four, where we are going to be collecting data, both quantitative and qualitative, from a variety of different sources to be as comprehensive as we can be, analyze that information quantitatively and qualitatively, and uh, iterate on recommendations that can address the problems and, and challenges identified from the data collection and analysis so that in the final report, we will have sort of a summary of uh, challenges or problems related to equity, potential solutions and, and recommendations to those challenges and implementation plans for how the state can execute to, um, to address the equity challenges that are, are um, identified. It, our intention is to do that process um, very much iteratively to make sure that as we learn from, um, from the various data sources that we are um, sort of continuously updating a list of recommendations and, and um, challenges 
that correspond and getting feedback on that, that information. Uh, we'll summarize that in a final report this fall and bring that draft final report through a listening tour in Connecticut, um, making sure that that as we present the final package, we have one last forum to incorporate any final um, feedback into the plan. Um, on the next slide, we can talk in more detail. Oops, in, in a minute, we'll talk in more detail on the different public data collection mechanisms. Um, first, wanted to just share the list of agencies that are participating in the study. Um, all 23 of the executive branch agencies will be um, interviewed, and each um, agency will pick at least one uh, program or area of focus that we can go deep on assessing equity challenges and potential solutions, both quantitatively and qualitatively. So on the next slide, we'll talk about ways in which uh, we welcome and encourage public engagement in the data collection process. Um, in addition to the interviews that we're doing with the executive branch agencies, uh, we're offering focus groups, both um, of community-based organizations who represent uh, various communities within the state of Connecticut, as well as Connecticut residents who don't have any specific affiliation with a, a community organization, but have feedback on um, equity-related issues in state government. Um, so throughout the, the spring and early summer, we anticipate working with the executive branch agencies to identify community-based organizations that, that they work with, who we should be engaging, and to go through a process to solicit participation among residents in focus groups. We have also designed and opened a public survey a sort of sample set of questions are on the right side of the slide. It is designed to be a, an open forum to collect written feedback from community members at any point during the course of the study. Um, the survey asks questions about um, any challenges that you may have um, in interacting with a state agency or in with a specific program within um, any state agency and asks for your ideas and input on um, potential solutions. And as I mentioned before, at the end of this process, we'll take all of our learnings, summarize it, and um, uh, do a listening tour across uh, the state of Connecticut to get final input on the plans. So um, we'd love to have your input um, in this equity study. And if you're interested in, in finding out additional information, you can go to the CHRO uh, website and you see the link there. And if you want to have um, input into the study, um, Angela mentioned that there is a um, that there is a, a survey and there is a link to the survey. It has now been put into the chat um, and there is the QR code that you can scan. That survey will remain open while this study is underway. And we really, really would love um, your input um, in particular um, and to identify any um, challenges or things that are working well. Uh, we want to hear both. Um, if you want um, to get more information or if you have questions about um, this study, you can submit them to us um, at the uh, Faulkner Group. Um, there's a SurveyMonkey link uh, for that and a QR code as well. I think both of these are in the chat. So um, we really encourage your feedback and your participation in this process. Um, on the next slide, we are going to open it up to questions. Um, so this is an opportunity for you. Um, you have two ways um, to, to um, indicate that you have a question. You can either um, open the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen and type in your question and we'll either respond to you by text or we'll um, answer you live. 
or you can raise your hand and then we'll unmute you and um, you'll be able to share your uh, question or comment with the group. So we would love uh, to open it up now for any uh, questions or comments or any additional information that we can share with you. Thank you. Not seeing any hands raised or any Q and A in the Q and A box. Oh, here we go. There's one. <laughs> So the question is um, from Jay, who chairs the Farmington Human Relations Commission and wondering about a role the town commissions could have in the study. Darcy, is that something you can help us answer? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much for coming, Jay. Um, I think one of the things that would be incredibly helpful is if, um, if you can help us get the word out, because I think one of the things that's going to be really important is making sure we reach, um, of course, as many people as we can to make sure they understand about um, that the survey's there, that we're doing the study. Um, and so I think one of the things the town commission can help us with is letting us know, um, you know, what community-based organizations might exist in their towns that would be good for us to reach. Um, so, you know, if there's if there's organizations in town that deal with seniors or the disabled community or other groups where um, they might have a lot of clients that um, use state programs, um, that would be good for us to get in contact with or just, you know, generally getting the word out in their community. I think that would be, um, that would be something that would be really helpful for us to, to um, have that information just because obviously you're going to know your community much better than we are. So, um, that would be really helpful. Um, and of course, if you can um, put information about the survey up on you know, your social media or your, your website, that would be great as well. Um, and you know, the dates of the focus groups and all, you know, all that kind of information, if you can help get the word out, all of that would be great. Any other, oh, is there a second, is there another question, Kristen? No. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll just leave space for a moment or two in case um, you have any additional questions. And Jay, thank you so much for your question. And Jay, I'll add it in response to you, but also to anyone else who's on the call, if you want to provide more information about the organizations that you work with, you can do that, submit a, a question or comment, um, the second link that I provided in the chat, and uh, that way we keep you up to date. And if there's other opportunities to get involved, we can share those along the way. Okay. Don't see any other questions. Again, if you have any questions um, after uh, this session, um, you have the links that were posted in the chat. Um, again, we really um, want to strongly um, encourage participation and, I, and as um, Darcy mentioned, getting the word out about the survey, um, about the study, and as we share information about focus groups, um, we, we will definitely um, look to you um, to help us um, to, to get the word out. And again, if you have any questions for us, um, you can use the Faulkner Consulting Group link um, um, and we will um, attempt to answer your questions as quickly as possible. I don't, um, Angela, anything, any parting comments on your end? 
um, just echoing gratitude for attendance and, and, and engagement in this very important topic. Um, we look forward to working with you and your community on this study. Thanks, everyone.